Hello, hey Lucas. Thanks for waiting. I, uh... Always, uh... <clears throat> I start up the camera. I mean, I start up the software and all. Like, ten minutes before going live. And it always says, you know, do you want an update and such. And I always say, do it later. But today I... Um, came down like an hour or two before. Hedge, hedge, Car Carl. Hey, hey, Carl. Um, hey, Eugene. Um, I came down an hour or two earlier. So I thought, what the hell? Let's just update it now. Um, so I updated all the drivers and such. And then, you know, just three minutes before, I loaded everything up and it said, uh, OBS Studio, the software, you know, can't load. Like your graphics driver must be out of date. So, oopsie. But we're all good. Oh, I'm tired, man. So those of you who are my Facebook friend will have seen um, pictures and video yesterday. Oh, thanks. Um, we'll have seen pictures and video yesterday. Yesterday, um, me and um, Element Productions, um, a local commercial or uh, commercial and video photography, cinematography, all that kind of stuff, that company. Um, we all met up at the beach in Bonnie Doon to film a, uh, a, um, a commercial, basically, for the next upcoming skin. Not this, but uh, coming soon, which you can actually hear in that video. Oh, it's also on YouTube. I posted it on YouTube, so check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, man. Uh, it looked a bit expensive considering a lot of gear and four dudes, uh, dudes by the way. Um, it was expensive, um, but it was very reasonable considering, um, considering the gear and and such. So it was expensive. Um, it's justified, I believe, because um, the skin really, really is um, like game changing in my opinion it'll completely change the way uh skinning is viewed and and you know decent quality or beyond decent like r above excellent quality amazing quality for synthetic skin um, it's just yeah going to change everything in every other way and not only for those of us in the international world but in japan as well so i wanted uh, to really make an impact because this isn't always the case, but um, in the Japanese Shamisen world, they don't take much. They don't. They don't usually take much interest or notice what goes on outside of the Shamisen world in Japan. So, um, like they, I think they've. Some people have seen the eclipse in Akatsuki and these kind of Shamisen, um, but you know, it's it's not happening in Japan or whatnot. So really, who cares or such. But so having a nice video using Facebook ads and such that everyone who has shamisen as their interest will be able to see and like, you know, can't ignore in a way. That's my whole goal of this video. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was a good, it was a great experience. There, everyone was so, um, well, it's also Santa Cruz. Everyone is very uh, relaxed and uh, easy to work with um, and professional and everything. But wow, yeah, um, got there, cloudy. Um, by the time they arrived, it started getting sunny. So we, f we filmed, I, I'm saying about 10 rounds of Jonkarabushi, um, and then finished a round, and then they changed positions. And then the p point was to kind of link all the footage up so we can do many different camera angles to make it a really nice visual experience. Um, but of course, you know, with, well, I mean, if you know or not, uh, Jonkarabushi, sometimes you don't do the same note twice because it's a very physical experience. So if your your bachi, if your hand just doesn't feel ready, it needs just a couple more thwacks on a note and then you can move or what. That's how I feel at least, like a gymna gymnastic act. Um, but when I said, oh, you got to play the same thing so we can link it, that wasn't going to happen. Um, no, so it, we did, yeah, about 10 takes with a drone and all sorts of incredible stuff. Um, and then it became like 4 or 5 p.m. 
and the lights started to change, and it looked even more amazing. The tides started to come up, so the incredible waves were splashing about, got some golden light action, which meant we had to refilm everything because the light looked completely different and had to reshoot the drone. Drone, So about 20 takes, and um, there was no real, no real place to sit on the algae, so I kind of stood in, you know, a power stance, as they say, which, yes, got tiring after a while, not being able to raise the, the lactic acid built up, let's say. And then, oh, the problem is that um, I was doing some of those, you know, that kind of thing, uh, tricky riffs. And tricky riffs sounded good at the beginning, but 20 takes into it, uh, it was sounding so sloppy, and, in my opinion, I think. Um, but well, probably that's, those are the takes we'll use because the quality of the, you know, the sunlight and everything looks so good. So I haven't seen the footage yet, but hopefully it's not too bad. Um, will you get John Cena to do the voiceovers? Do you like traditional Japanese instruments? Do you like your puppy? Um, no, I won't. But in order to make it, um, oh, so so the, basically the video, um, the advertisement, the commercial commercial will be just the length of John Gadabushi plus um, some B roll of the um, the ocean and such. Because with the drone, it went up all the way and did like bird's eye shots and things. So that'll be kind of an in intro and outro or whatnot, but it'll primarily just be John Karabushi. So um, I don't think I'll have any voice overlays, but I will have text. Um, I have to figure out what the text is, text is going to be. You know, kind of poetic stuff like a new a new look on skins. I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. Hey, uh, safe travels tomorrow, Jose. Glad, glad you're watching. Um, happy packing. Let us keep us posted on how your packing is going. Um, yeah, something I'll have to think of. You know what I usually do for Eclipse and those kind of cheesy taglines. Um, but then also doing that, I can have it translated. The subtitles translate into Japanese. So then we can just have two videos going at the same time. Yeah. Next week, next weekend, Yuzu Natsumi will be coming from Japan. Um, she could probably help me with that, I think. Anywho, so that's that. Um, how long, Lucas, how long did it take? Let's see. I think about, oh, not as long as I thought. Three to four hours, I think. 30 minutes to set up. They got in around two. 30 minutes to set up. Um down and such so yeah about three to four hours I think um, it was quite decent just before the the Sun got too low where it was just everything would be a, a silhouette uh, yes standing not moving position almost at all not sitting or anything um, thus I am tired I'm really pooped today <laughs> that my I'm not sure which is tired my ankles from the power thing or the uh, bocce hand. Um, but thus, uh, like Jose, I will not be participating today, and you guys can come up with the drill, and I'll watch. No, I'm, I'm joking. How are you all doing? Um... But while you guys answer that, um, our drill is going to be up, up, down, bachi. It's, I think this is something we might have done last year, but I don't really remember. But this seems like, um, I don't think you want me to go <laughs> for that up, down drill. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, Carl. Um, oh, yeah, I'll show the Itamaki up close. Um, okay, I'll show the Itamaki, and then we'll get into the drill. I thought of it. All right. 
So this is the Itamaki. This is from uh, 2014 when Carl Hedlund joined Team Bachido. Um, before we went to the Hirosaki Taikai, I visited Tokyo Agaki, the company that makes Eclipse and Akatsuki and such. And Otaki, Otaki-san, the um, president, gave these as a little gift. He wanted me to bring them to Hirosaki to use. Um, and if you know anyone that was interested, I could refer them and um, yeah, I could refer them to Tokyo Agaki to make prayer. Sadly, nobody was interested. At least nobody wa asked me about them. I didn't have my button ask me about uh, uh, Beko Itomaki. Um, another fun fact: uh, Adrian Ten Ten and I we were at the port. These these weren't fitted in. These were thick um, pieces. Um, so they couldn't fit in my shamisen, but um, Adrian Ten Ten and I, we were at the Hirosak, no, at the um, Hachinohe port going to Sapporo. Yeah, before the Taikai. Um, and so I, and we were there from like 9 p.m. to midnight, I think, or even earlier, 8 p.m. to midnight um, before it boarded. Uh, so I went to the uh, Hyakuen shop. The a hundred a dollar store basically, and just bought a dollar file, um, and just filed, and just at the port, just um, yeah, filed so they could fit in, and then used a piece of tape. I didn't have a drill, so I just used a piece of tape to tape the string uh, to the. Actually, I'll do this again. Tape a piece of string to the itmaki and then twist around there. I don't know if you remember Carl, but on the itinoito. I had the tape around there, and it was holding fine until the day of our our stage attack. And the glue, uh, the adhesive of the tape, f started uh, failing or slipping. So the string just went Put a new piece of tape, did it again. Um, too much residue, maybe, I don't know. Um, so I just redid the tape and such. We got on stage. It was fine, but then like halfway through, um, it was plain and noted that this like really went down. Uh, and my shamisen, we had several mics set up on stage. My shamisen was directly in front of one. So if you listen to the 2014 Team Bachido um, Shutsujo, um, for a little bit you'll hear that uh, one shamisen sounds really off. That was mine. About, I think, halfway through, I just um, shadow played that string. I didn't strike that anymore. Uh, fun facts. Um, anywho, so here, yeah, here it is. Um, there's a strip. I think it's Beko, but it could be um, synthetic. Um, it's just on one strip. The rest is clear. Uh, so when held at the right angle, Yeah, when held at the right angle, you get that kind of cool effect. Um, I didn't use these um, up until this shamisen. It just never really seemed to fit. It's quite striking, but you know, the koki, the other kind of shamisen, it just seemed a little out of place. But with the snake wood and everything, um, yeah, it seemed like a perfect fit. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Um, I remember you having those. I guess I was busy watching the bachi technique. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh yeah, if uh, you see the pictures in our, are they? Um, they were there. I had them on the the first bloodwood prototype uh, shamisen, and then Aki was using Ten Ten was using uh, my Kolki shamisen that had the white, w black and white um, uh, spiral nejiri uh, itumaki. All right. Um, so up and down bachi. What's the deal with that? It's something we should work on a bit more. So here we go. First, let's check out our bachi technique. Um, yeah. 
by Cheat Techniques. So, um, as usual, um, the uh, bocce shouldn't change position much, like going up or down. The whole, I mean, the the motion of going down shouldn't be any different than going up. That's what I mean. The whole bachi will move. And what's most important that I notice with my students is um, observing this angle. Some of my students will hold this really sharply here. Da 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 da. -da. Others will go like this. Um, but no, um, this is where our fingers should maybe be so when we're doing it. Two centimeters about, two centimeters from the, the skin. And when you drop down, it's about five millimeters. The, your knuckle, your middle knuckle is about five millimeters. Here's also a fun fact. When you keep your fingers this close, then if you want to do komazuke, the technique where you put your pinky on the uh, do, sorry, when you put your pinky on the koma, it's really easy to do because your hand is already so close. In fact, when you're playing, when I'm playing, like here, when I strike down, my uh, pinky and fingers are really already touching the skin. Like this, just barely, just barely. So when I strike down, I feel them lightly tap the skin. very lightly tap the skin. So as long as you're tapping here, even if you're doing near this, okay, there it's, it's slightly angling a bit, um, so it's not touching there. Um, but here, fingers are touching. So if you just put your uh, pinky a little, uh, bit forward and closer to the coma, um, it just sits down on it like so. And then you can get easy komatsuke after you get used to the position. Just like that. When you strike here, your middle finger is touching the skin as well as, yeah, your middle finger, yeah. And then from here, dong, and then strike down maibachi. And if you get the placement right, your pinky will be on the coma. Strike, strike, off coma, on coma. That's not about up and down, but um, it seemed relevant to Shami, so. Um, I use that sharp and grip my lowest volume, actually. Oh, interesting. You use that sharp angle to get your to get your lowest volume. Um, I bet you can't bend your finger like that, so it goes along the coma. Oh, it goes parallel to the coma. Ah, <laughs> snap. Well, fortunately, Carl doesn't need the coma to get to mute the sound because uh, he already has a sharp angle to get his lowest volume. No need for extra junk like that. Uh, huh, what to do? Is that just the bodily kind of thing? <coughs> yeah, Reagan does that a lot. Um, it's only... Did I mention it? I don't think so. Maybe I did. I don't know. Last week or so, um, my student 
Santa Cruz student. He was here, and we were doing Nokudan together. And during Nokudan, I just looked down, and I was surprised, like, whoa, I'm doing Komatsuke. So up until last week, it never felt comfortable, so I never did it. So I was like, whoa, it happened naturally. And even, even at the Tokyo Shami Camp last year, he was teaching about the importance of Komatsuke, and he looked at me and was like, you got to do it. Yeah. Oh, Eugene, there's no dumb questions. Uh, I, wa I really want to learn shamisen. I'm originally a pianist. Several other instruments, including gujang, pipa, arhu. Sweet. Um, is there a time difference between uh, that? What do you mean by time difference? A time difference to learn? Um, I've tried during all these years to bend my pinky because I feel you would get better transfer power without any strain. Um, you mean bending, bending this way? So all this time, is your p has your pinky been straight, or bending this way? Hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, Carl, can you hold your, can you hold your hand like this? Fingers out and in. Because if you can hold it like this, then your pinky should be in the right area. Um, oh, I see. Shamisen Sanshin, I read a fair bit of his reviews on the instruments, and I was wondering if there was a tone difference. Ah, I see, tone. Uh, yes, there is. Um, good question. Um, tone difference. Yeah, uh, Sanshin is, let's see, it's a bit plunkier, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's not skinned quite as tight. Um, so not quite as much sustain. Um, it has a really nice warm, uh, warm, warm sound, island kind of sound, and sounds wonderful with singing too. Um, but yeah, there's a definite difference. Um, there's, ah, yeah, there's a definite difference. Um, hey, Scott. <coughs> um, I've been enjoying these lessons a lot. Thank you. Is there a chance in the future that you could do Akita ni Katabushi? Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, hey, guys, have we done Akita ni Katabushi before? I think we might have done it in a previous lesson. Check, uh, type, you know, um, Shamisen Live Akita ni Katabushi in the uh, search or whatever, because I think we've done it. Um, if not, we'll definitely do it. Um, but then the bachi will point in the wrong angle. It might be that my bachi is not properly sized for my hand. Um, interesting. So you can do that. And if you put here, like, where's your thumb then, I wonder? Um, anywho, interesting. Well... Um, uh, so we won't be doing tremolo today, um, which is, excuse me, um, we're not doing tremolo like this. We're going to slow it down, which is just... That sort of motion. So, um, bachi parallel to the strings, oops, 
And without this kind of motion like this, this kind of up and down, see if we can do this with each new toe. Thinking of like the da dun dun. We'll do a similar thing. Instead of don, 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 we'll go. Don, 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 don. Don, 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 don. Don, 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 don. That's a warm up. So are you used to this position now? Uh, now and on your own time, um, do that where you or try try that where you can um, go up and down and then double that time. Da 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 um, oh, hey, uh, Jojo Japan. I recently got my shamisen, excellent, and started lessons. And when my teacher told me I should point the saw ahead so I can see the ichi no toe, I've been having a lot more trouble. Oh, like this, you mean? Uh, point the saw. Oh, only see the ichi no toe. Right. Um, I mean, in the beginning, you don't have to do that. In the beginning, you could just look. Of course, if you have a teacher, they're going to want to instill, um, uh, they're wanting to instill good habits from the very beginning. In my experience, though, um, those habits kind of take care of themselves in a way. Like when you're beginning, it's it's more helpful to be able to see all the strings. So, um, you know, eventually muscle memory will build, and then, you know, you'll. I don't think you'll have any trouble. I never had any trouble just popping the spec when my when I had the muscle memory. Bringing this up to look at one string wasn't a problem. Um, but in the very beginning, it was more helpful to look at all the strings. Otherwise, you get frustrated and such. Um, so, uh, but of course, you have a teacher and they get a little funny like that. Um, so, yeah, it, formally it is maybe about 45 degrees from here, so you can only see the Ichinoito. Um, that position does, um, it does make things easier when you get into advanced technique and such, in terms of keeping everything balanced and such. Um, but, no, yeah, in the beginning, I think uh, being able to look at all does help. Oh, but if you, if that's what you want, though, that's, that's your call. So good. Um, a lot of my students will, will go a little too close, and I do find that they get a little constrained, um, which just throw them off, especially when going faster. Um, yeah, this, I think, keeps the muscles more loose, too, than having it tightened up here. Um, so, yeah, uh, up, down, up down, up, when you're ready, double time, and we'll just go at that speed for now, but then you can take that as much as far as you want, um, up, down, drill, Ready? 
as you might have guessed, I haven't thought of this beforehand. Okay, well, let's start with this for now, because this, at least the beginning, will be set in stone. Zero. Every note will be up and down. Zero, three, four, three. Zero, three, four, three, four, six. Zero, three, four, three, four, six. Note that percussion. And zero, three, four, three, four, six. Angle. Zero, three, four, three, four, six. Faster. Other side. Oh. oh, tired. Here we go. Zero, three, four, three, four, six. There we go. Now we're rocking. How are we doing with that? Um, wish there was a there was a way to share image links here in the chat. I wish so too. Kyle, I sent you an image on Facebook. Go and take a look. Um, but since someone else can see, what do you mean no one else can see? We can just turn the phone around and then we can all see. How do we like that? <laughs> and um, okay. Interesting point. So this is, ah, interesting. Um, so here is Carl Hedlund uh, holding his bocce in the nude, but I will just maxim, I'll just zoom in to the bocce part uh, to spare us all. Interesting. Uh, oh. Yeah, so that's your hand. Hmm. That, that's the full Bekovacci, I think, right? Yeah. Are you okay, uh, Carl? In this picture, if I'm, I'm able to reconstruct it, at least the hand. Um, it appears you are holding it like this. Uh, th there's a couple things that m like this. Yeah. There's a couple things that might, by, by changing a couple points, you might be able to reposition your hand to fit better. Because if you can do this, you should be able to do it, he thinks. One of which is, I don't know, I'm sure you, I'm sure you do this normally, but your thumb does go on the, on here. In the picture, you're going like this. And already, for me too, actually, just right here, I notice when my thumb is to the side, like doing thumbs up, the pinky's here. When I turn it around, oh, look at that, look at that. When the palm goes up, when the palm goes up, the pinky already shifts out, which then aligns it. Oh, look at that. We're all learning something today. Oh yeah, so so if my thumb is like this, I can't, I can't, um, I can't turn it like this way. So definitely, this is integral. Are you doing that? Um, 
for me, I would rotate the bocce so the ring. For me, I would. For me, if I would rotate the bocce so the ring and the little finger would be parallel, my thumb would be in the middle of the bocce. Okay. Like this, I assume. Um. <laughs> what happens when you, if you can, okay. So Carl, if you're if you're still here for a moment, um, here's the camera. Um, can you like put your uh, camera on a a timer or something and like hold your bocce like this and see if it can just fit in see how the rest is positioned like so oh hey Samson glad you could say hi wow it's so late there thank you for tuning in it's the weather it's the weather is giving you a sign that it's time to uh, get your shim, shim sham on Okay, while Carl is doing that, let's return to um, the drill. So. And. Zero. Three. Four. Three. Four. Six. One more time, and then we'll add on another part. Zero. Three, four, three, four, six, then nine, nine, six, then six again, nine, six, six. So, zero. If there's any questions, please let me know. Then, 13, 12, 9, 10. Carl, this new grip feels so different. Could you show me your bocce hand with the blade directly towards the camera so I can see the angle of the palm? Okay. Of course we can do that. Um, so, da -da -dum is how I would play. Just double check. The note, this finger, the the end of the finger, the pad is what's on the underside, but it's only, it's not fully gripping, it's just um, hooking on the edge.
Um, Jerry, I'm three weeks in and already wish I had a full deck of bocce. Full deck of, yeah. Um, as my teacher, don't try less than me. Been spoiled from the start. Yeah, I know know how that is. Um, I used to have a plastic bocce. Oh, I even had a wood bocce, actually, a Naguto one. And then Kevin, when he was here, Kevin Metz, uh, I would borrow his Betko bocce. And then I think Grant was starting or someone needed it for a while. So, oh, I was deprived. Yeah, you get used to it. Who's your teacher, by the way, may I ask? Oh, Hibiki, right, right, right. Ah. <laughs> cool stuff. Uh, yeah, it's probably harder to get the bot bring the bachi into the UK, for sure. Bring the back or bring the bring the nice ones. But him or David Hughes, I think they go to Japan pretty often. At least David probably does. Um, I wonder if you could put in a little special request if you wanted. Um, cool. J Hibiki's, Hibiki is a really, really sweet, uh, nice, nice fellow. He came to the Shami camp uh, two years ago in the Berlin. Is it two years already? Wow. I really like him. I think uh, um, he began his teacher. They have their performance this evening. Maybe it's already happening. Hope they, hope they have a good turnout because concerts on the weekend are pretty pretty tricky. any questions that's our drill let's see we can just repeat that As you can see, it's easy to just make up your own. Um, there's no actually real special note order. And you can actually, if we didn't already have our uh, drill, which I already forgot what it was. What was our drill for winning the uh, Bachido Hapi? Um, chord. Oh, it was the chords, right. For Norwegian wood or such. Um, if we didn't have that already as a contest, this would be a good contest. Because... You can make any note, just a uh, note, note order, it just ascends, have it ascend first and descend. Oh, let's do that.
Um, okay, let's give this a go, and I will make notation for later. Um, zero, three, two, zero. Sound like each other. Sound like each other. I will be back here. Zero, three, two, zero. Then, ni no ito sharp. Zero, san no ito. Then one, ni no ito. Zero, ni no ito. Zero, three, two, zero, sharp. Zero, one, zero, zero, three, two, zero, sharp, zero, one, zero. Then, excuse me. Um, then zero, three. Let's see. Let's make this up. All right, so those who want a tricky time will have both. Yeah, this will be for the tricky folk who want the tricky stuff. So we just did zero, three, two, zero, sharp, zero, one, zero, then sanuito, zero, seven, six, four. From here, Pink is the easiest. Seven Nino Ito. Um, six. Seven. Then ring finger San Ito. Now, of course, you could go ze zero, six. Seven, four, three, two, three, six. Um, but this is a good time to, to also practice switching strings because that does take a little coordination. To get price precise. So there. Then, ten, thirteen, twelve, ten, nine, ten, ten, thirteen, twelve, ten, nine, ten. Then, Four, six, ten, thirteen, twelve, ten, nine, ten, four, six. All 
All right, so for fancy people, people who want to be fancy, who want to look fancy, whether they are or not, because fanciness is a relative term. Um, so, okay, four, six. <laughs> now, every note will be uh, a stroke. So seven, down, six, up, four, down, three, up, two, down, zero, up, three, down, six, up, down, zero. Then zero, subedi, zero, zero. You can do this at a slow speed. This is great training for precision, moving fast and being precise. And staying relaxed. And finger choices. There we go. Zero, three, two, zero, sharp, zero, one, zero, zero, seven, six, four, seven, six, seven, six, nine, thirteen, twelve, ten, nine, ten, four, six, 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 seven, six, four, three, two, zero, three, six, zero, 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 zero. Oh. All right, it's two in my wrist is finally killing again it's not killing it's being killed uh, ah. well that's enough for today one more time though okay from the from the i'll just run through the beginning one once yes it was the beginning one That's fine. Zero, three, four, three, four, six, nine, six, six, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, twelve, nine, ten. Again without speaking. Now the advanced one. Zero, three, two, zero, sharp, zero, one, zero, zero, seven, six, four, seven, six, seven, six, ten, thirteen, twelve, ten, nine, ten, four, six, seven, six, four, three, zero, da 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 bonus points oh, if my pinky is to be rotated parallel to the handle I have to raise my palm t twice as much as you do interesting uh, send a picture but keep it clean this time Carl
Yeah, send a picture or post it on the f post it on the uh, Facebook group. Because that would be interesting for us all to see. All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you all for joining. Uh, whew, th this was a good subject. Even though we actually, I don't know how much we did, but I hope it was more helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, hope you got some stuff. And feel free to post. Um, even though our contest is on the uh, courting things for the Norwegian wood, feel free to post a little video of the da 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 da, -da the drill that we did today. So that'd be fun to see. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, Carl, I just did the uh, a little run through with the with the notes said and then without at the very end. So um, a little yeah summary at the end. Good stuff. All right, Lucas, Carl, Jerry. That's three people there. Is someone else? Oh, Samson. If Samson's still there, you guys are the, the only four people watching. Nice, tight, tight crowd. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, next week we should have class. Or uh, we should all, we'll hang out next week again. Same time, same place. Bye. -bye, -bye, -bye. Hey, five people are watching now. Too late. We're, we're just wrapping up. Okay. See you guys. See you, Carl, Lucas, Jerry.